I've seen throughout Europe, throughout Russia, that same kind of humor emerge from the generation of World War II. It seemed like that humor is required to somehow deal with the pain and the suffering of that that war created. Well, you do need the environment to create the broad Slavic soul. I don't think that uh, many Americans really appreciate um, Russian humor, how you had to joke during the time of, let's say, Article 58 under Stalin. You had to be very, very careful. You know, the, the concept of a Russian satirical magazine like Crocodile uh, doesn't make sense. So you have this cross-cultural problem that there are certain areas of human experience that it would be better to know nothing about. And quite unfortunately, Eastern Europe knows a great deal about them, which makes the, you know, the songs of Vladimir Vysotsky so potent, the, uh, you know, the prose of Pushkin, whatever it is. Uh, you have to appreciate the depth of the Eastern European experience. And I, I would think that perhaps Americans knew something like this around the time of the Civil War or maybe um, you know, under slavery and Jim Crow, or even the uh, harsh tyranny of uh, the coal and steel employers during the labor wars. Um, but in general, I would say it's hard for us to understand and imagine the collective culture unless we have the system of selective pressures that, for example, uh, Russians were subjected to. Yeah, so if there's one good thing that comes out of war, it's literature, art, and uh, humor, and music. Oh, I don't think so. I think almost everything is good about war except for death and destruction. Right. <laughs> it, without the death, it would bring uh, the romance of it. The whole thing is nice. Well, this is why we're always caught up in war, and we have this very ambiguous relationship to it, is that it, it makes life real and pressing and meaningful and at an unacceptable price, and the price has never been higher.